how did I come to be involved in this show? You know, it was, it was uh, the luckiest day of my life, and it was about seven years ago. So now it's 2010, so it was 2003, because I'm very good in math, which is why I work in the theater. Um, uh, how did I come to be involved? I was just sitting innocently at my desk, minding my own business, and the phone rang, which is why you should never leave your desk. The phone rang, and it was an old client of mine who said the words I will never forget. I have the rights to the Four Seasons catalog. Would you like to do a musical about the Four Seasons? And because, you know, I'm kind of a smart mouth, I said, I love Vivaldi. That's a great idea. And he said, no, 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 not Frankie Valli in the Four Seasons. And I said, you mean that, that, little, that little man, <laughs> that little man with the big voice? And he said, yeah. And I said, why would anybody want to do a musical about him? He said, well, they'll tell you themselves if you want to have lunch with them. So free lunch. I'm totally there. And I called my friend Marshall Brickman, who uh, is a, uh, a very, very um, brilliant and uh, acclaimed Oscar-winning screenwriter, much, much too important to be talking here on the website. Um, uh, and uh, I had lost a substantial amount of money to him playing poker. And um, I said, I'm tired of giving you money on installments. Um, suppose. Uh, suppose we write a show together and, said, and I can pay off my debt to you. And he said, what do we know about writing musicals? Absolutely nothing. And I said, that's true, but it's a free lunch. So he said, okay, I'm totally there. We went to a very dark, smoky, quiet Italian restaurant on the Upper West Side of Manhattan on a rainy afternoon. And we sat in the back with uh, two guys smoking cigars. One of them was Bob Gordio principal songwriter of the group, and the others is very dapper, natalie dressed, tiny little Frankie Valley. And um, we thought it would be a very short <laughs> meal, at the end of which we would say thank you and goodbye. Uh, and then uh, whilst waiting for the, uh, for the uh, first course, we said innocently enough, so what was it like <laughs> to be a blue collar, Italian American, Roman Catholic, first generation guy who you know, didn't have an exotic accent or a long hair, or any glamour quotient at all, uh, trying to make it in the music business. And they started to tell us what it was like. And in about two minutes, we had forgotten where we were, <laughs> how much we wanted to leave. We were listening to this story. I think, um, I think it would be fair to say it was a ripping yarn. And uh, a lot of it kind of shocking and frightening, you know, because they talking about the mob, you know, committing crimes, doing prison time. You know, it, it just didn't make a whole lot of sense to us because their music is upbeat, happy, classic pop, two and a half minute songs, you know, that you have on 45 records. And they're telling us this backstory that had anyone known at the time, certainly would have ended their careers because nobody thought they were worth writing about. Why? Because they didn't have the glamour quotient. They didn't have the exotic British invasion kind of aura. They were totally written off instead of being written about. And we knew as writers that we had hit the mother load because there's, no, no, there's nothing better than a good story that hasn't been told. You know how those movie ads always say, based on a true story? We imagined very, very quickly that this would say, based on a good story. Oh, my God.